Elon Musk is a dropout and a billionaire. After receiving an undergraduate degree from the University of Pennsylvania, he dropped out of the Stanford PhD program in physics. He wound up CEO of PayPal, which eBay bought for $1.5 billion in 2002. With his fortune made in the virtual world, he's created Tesla Motors and SpaceX in the real world. Named for Nikola Tesla, the eccentric Serbian-born inventor of alternating current, Tesla Motors will roll their first 100 all-electric cars out factory doors this summer. SpaceX, one of many new ventures aimed at commercializing outer space, was recently awarded a $278 million NASA contract to build and operate launch vehicles and crew capsules to service the International Space Station and take America back to the moon. Elon, thank you so much for being with us here at Wired Science. Well, thank you for having me. It's fair to say you've made a fortune. Yeah, I think so, by you have. any reasonable standard, yeah. If I made that money, I'd sit on a beach, I'd drink beer, and I would just watch the sunset, kind of like a Corona beer commercial. Have you ever thought about that as a career option? Uh, you know, I find that really pretty boring. So <laughs> that would be torture if I had to do that every day. That would really be pretty awful for me. You are establishing uh, a presence, certainly, uh, with Tesla Motors. This is your electric car company, correct? And this is no hybrid car you could buy on a car lot. This thing goes from zero to 60 in four seconds. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Zero to 60 in under four seconds. It's faster, a better acceleration than any uh, Porsche currently in production and any Ferrari except the Enzo. Um, and it's uh, twice the energy efficiency of a Prius. So it's, uh, you really have uh, the moral high ground and uh, you get to you know, leave uh, the Ferrari guy in your dust. You know, Tesla, is, is the first car is, is a sports car, not because we think the world lacks for a sports car, uh, but because it is the right entry point for the market. If you have a new technology, the right place to enter is high unit cost, low unit volume. Uh, just as you know, when, when, a, when a new cell phone come out, comes out or a new, uh, a new laptop or, or some, some new thing, uh, it tends to be expensive at first uh, because they're, they're figuring out all the issues and it takes time to optimize. And then over time, that, that technology will become uh, cheaper and cheaper. And so the idea is to drive to mass market as rapidly as possible, uh, but at, uh, only at the pace at which the technology uh, matures. So will we see uh, the Tesla Roadster this year? Absolutely, this year should be coming out in about uh, six, seven months. And maybe I'm leaping ahead here, but no. model, model two of Tesla is a $49,000 four-door, five-passenger sedan. Um, and that's, uh, that's going to be obviously a much broader market segment uh, that, that, that can make use of that car. And then Model 3 is intended to be around a $30,000 price point. Uh, and so that's, that's really affordable by, by almost everyone uh, who's, who, who's, who can buy new cars. Now, you're also pursuing another new technology involving space flight. Well, I think if you consider two paths, one where we're forever confined to Earth and the other where we're a space frank civilization uh, out exploring the stars, I think the latter is far more exciting mm -hmm. um, and will result in a, a richer and, and more diverse uh, human experience. You have said that we got lost along the way with our space program. What did you mean by that? Well, I, what I mean by that is in 1969, we were able to go to the moon. And here we are over three decades later, and we can barely get to low Earth orbit. And I think by any measure, that is a step backwards. How can you explore space better than NASA? There's a confusion in the public mind that, that perhaps a company like SpaceX is competing with NASA. Mm -hmm. but, but in fact, NASA is a customer of ours. So we're actually uh, providing services to NASA, launch services. Uh, and when, when the shuttle retires in 2010, uh, so starting in 2011, SpaceX's rocket will replace the space shuttle in servicing the space station with astronauts and cargo transportation. The name of your rocket ship is called the Falcon Explorer, is that it? Falcon 9. The Falcon 9 yeah, is, is the rocket. And, and then the, space, the spaceship is Dragon. Dragon. Yeah, so the Falcon 9 rocket lifts the Dragon spaceship, and the Dragon spaceship is what goes to the space station and then returns to Earth. You are not alone in this this ambition to explore space absolutely as an it. entrepreneur and there's there's quite a bit yeah. of competition out there there's jeff bezos with blue origin there's richard branson with his virgin galactic right um, and i'm not talking about nasa either yeah. who is your competition we have no serious competition none not presently and, and, so that and branson by, guy's kind of a hack then well what uh, branson's doing by the way i'm a great admirer of branson uh is really um, a much smaller technological challenge. So their craft would be suborbital. 
so it would go to about Mach 3. Uh, our craft is orbital. It goes to Mach 25, so 25 times the speed of sound. To do what Branson is doing, you need, say, about nine units of energy. To do what we're doing, you need 625 units of energy. The difference is monumental. So, I mean, what Branson is doing from a technological standpoint is building something that can cross the English Channel. What we're building is something that can circumnavigate the globe. I still think what he's doing is great. And by the way, I bought a ticket on, on his effort. But it's not, it's not in the same league technologically. So you're not particularly worried? The things that worry me are, are, are we going to make a mistake? Our own foolishness, our own errors can, can hurt us. So rocket science really is rocket science. Yeah. It, <laughs> it looks hard, and it's harder than it looks. What is your hope in terms of the impact you will leave on culture? I think what I'd like to do is help solve some important problems. So I, I think in, in a small way, uh, I helped build the Internet. Uh, and, and then with respect to the, the global warming problem, the, the transition away from oil and other hydro hydrocarbons to, to something which is clean and sustainable, uh, I hope to have an impact there. And then uh, with respect to space, the long-term ultimate objective, the, the holy grail, is to help make life multiplanetary. That's really our, what we'd like to do. I don't think your goal's big enough. Ha! Huh. Yeah? It's ambitious. Well, like I said, we don't, don't expect to do it single-handedly, but we certainly would like to help make it happen. Elon Musk, thank you so right. much for being with us here at Wired Science. Thank you for having me. If you'd like to hear more of our interview with Elon Musk, go to pbs.org.